So why don't you tell us a little bit about your research, uh, maybe one or two uh, highlights that you think are particularly interesting, and uh, maybe how you uh, arrived at those topics. Mm -hmm. If I think about my research topics now, we have a very broad scope of research topics. And currently, for example, we have uh, six projects going on on a very different topics. Uh, I have six research projects in my lab, and one of them is dealing with transition metal and nanoparticles catalysis for organic synthesis. And the second one is uh, dealing with mechanistic studies by experiment and computations. So we do some theoretical calculations to explore reaction mechanisms. And we have a very good support of experimental tools to prove or to find the new mechanistic pathways. We have a special project uh, which is called New Life of Old Molecules. This is an interesting one. We use uh, small molecules, like for example acetylene mm -hmm. or calcium carbide, very well known small molecules, most of them are produced on industrial scale. And we try to find a new chemistry with these very small molecules to give a new life to them. We also have a, a project on carbon materials. We use carbon materials as reagents, as well as supports for making catalysts. And um, we have two relatively new topics. One of them concerns biomass conversion. So we do biomass conversion, we produce 5-HMF, that's a platform chemical. And we also do organic synthesis starting from 5-HMF. One project is a collaboration of, with biochemists, so we study chemical phenomena in biological environment. So concerning your question about like, what our publications and what our studies I could find more interesting, I can point on three examples. And um, the first one is here. This uh, was published in two, uh, 2012. And we have discovered that um, in a regular solutions of very well-known palladium complex, which is palladium 2dba3. And uh, this is what usually used for doing solution state organometallic chemistry with palladium and also homogeneous catalysis. And we have found that this complex can readily decompose and form nanoparticles of palladium. Of course, this phenomenon was known, and it was known that uh, palladium complex, especially palladium 2dba3, can decompose to give nanoparticles. But what was surprising is that this decomposition is really very easy, very mm -hmm. rapid, and very fast. It may happen either during storage of the palladium complex, and we have analyzed the complex that we usually receive, and it may contain up to 20 or 25 percent of palladium nanoparticles. Just imagine that you have ordered this complex and you used it for doing catalysis. You cannot even say which kind of catalysis you will have because with soluble part you will have a homogeneous catalysis and with insoluble part, with the nanoparticles, you may have a heterogeneous catalysis. This was a quite interesting study and also this study uh, was made possible by using an electron microscope. Now we have even two electron microscopes in my lab. It, like, it is like a regular equipment and we look at the solutions. So with modern electron microscopes, we can study what is going on in solution, and we can reveal nanoparticles directly in solution. I think this is a quite interesting topics, uh, topic. It uh, concerns like fundamental mechanisms of mm -hmm. catalysis, homogeneous catalysis, heterogeneous catalysis, and possibly leaching. That's a very big uh, fundamental topic. We <coughs> And also it um, concerns the issue dealing with nanoparticle contamination. So we have many of, uh, we may have many complexes contaminated with nanoparticles and what is the possible influence of this contamination on the outcome of chemical reactions. And this story started from uh, one of my uh, PhD students did the study. And usually we try to record the spectrum of initial compounds that we use for catalysis. So we have just, he has recorded, uh, Sergei Zaleski, my PhD student, has recorded the spectrum of this compound. And he, he has found a little signal in the NMR spectrum, which he cannot explain. And afterwards he spent like, he spent it like six months to discover what are the little signals in the NMR spectrum. And I'm, I'm very glad that I had such a student, such a dedicated students. Usually all other students just ignore right. small signals <laughs> in the NMR spectrum or do not record the spectrum of catalyst precursor. But in this case, by this accident, we have really uh, found, I think, this very interesting stuff. So do you think this is common among precursors in catalysis and organometallic chemistry? Do you think there's uh, other surprises waiting to be found out there? Yeah. Uh, thank you. This is a really excellent question. As far as palladium catalysis is concerned, the nanoparticle contamination is really an important issue because palladium forms 
clusters and particles very easily. And even if we start with homogeneous complexes, with homogeneous catalysis, with soluble complexes, we can really anticipate formation of clusters and nanoparticles. We uh, investigated a few other cases, like with nickel and with platinum, and we still observe nanoparticle contamination. I think it is an interesting topic, and uh, one of the most uh, practical points is uh, how to make catalysts more efficient and more recyclable. For example, if you want to recycle your catalyst, you need to uh, take care in which state it is. If it is homogeneous catalysis, it should not form nanoparticles. Huh? If you want to have a nanoparticle catalysis, it's, uh, you should avoid leaching as far as possible. So the question of interconversion between homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis, to my understanding, is a really very important and challenging one. The next uh, very important issue which uh, came uh, as a result of this study is our uh, understanding of the mechanism of palladium catalysis and especially on cross-coupling chemistry. Uh, we have published an article in Organometallics together with uh, Irina Beletska and we, uh, we try to propose that many catalytic reactions without a specially designed ligand uh, will go to the so-called cocktail type mechanism it means that uh, one may have simultaneously palladium complexes, palladium clusters, and palladium nanoparticles in the same reaction vessel. And it is even possible that three reactions will go in parallel on different active centers of this catalyst. And the contribution will vary depending on the substrates, reagents, additives, ligands, solvents, temperature, and so on. So it's a kind of dynamic system, and it's possible even to adjust catalytic activity by s shifting the equilibrium between complexes, clusters, and nanoparticles. So it's again uh, points out on the complicated mechanisms of mm -hmm. catalytic reactions, and again highlights that we have many challenging points that are just waiting to be discovered. Uh, our recent study in organometallics uh, uh, is dealing with the carbon complexes of nickel, this NHC carbons very well known ligands and usually we believe that the strength of the interaction between metal and ligand is enough to um, make it uh, to stabilize the complex as a homogeneous catalyst but we have uh, surprisingly found that these complexes can undergo hydrolysis mm -hmm. by reaction with water and they also can decompose to form palladium clusters or nickel clusters and nickel particles and the, and the ligand so the question is also important for NHC complexes, at least for nickel. Uh, sure. Concerning our studies, which have been published in Organometallics, I think these are three most interesting ones. Great, I agree. I think it's beautiful chemistry.